men's tournament is underway at the 2015 Pan Am Games in Hamilton, Panama. All in red, kicking from right to left in this first half. And Peru, a white and that famous red sash across their chest. Both nations making their respective debuts in the competition. For the men, it is an under-22 event, though all teams can include three overage players on their 18-man rosters. Panama featuring several players who caught the eye in the recent FIFA U20 World Cup in New Zealand. Watch out for Fidel Escobar, Jamal Rodriguez, among others. They've never met in this particular tournament, but Peru and Panama did clash just about a year ago in a senior-friendly international in Lima. That was the most recent meeting between these new nations, and not on that occasion, Peru emerged winners by three goals to nil. I'm sure no Panamanian soccer fans will have forgotten that. So first match in Group A in the men's football tournament. And the way the men's tournament works is that there are eight teams in all, seven qualifiers plus the hosts Canada, divided into two groups of four. Ran Robin play, everybody plays everybody else. And at the conclusion of those three games, the top two in each qualify for the medal rounds, the semi-finals. Well, I mentioned Fidel Escobar, and I watched him in New Zealand just uh, a few weeks ago, scored a couple of screamers from long range. He generally plays as a centre-back, but sometimes you wouldn't know it because he packs a punch, and he's uh, often on target. It's going to bounce harmlessly over the head of the Peruvian goalkeeper, Jonathan Medina. But Medina would do well to have done his homework as far as Escobar and others are concerned, because they will shoot on sight if they think there's just a glimmer of hope. Straight into touch from Medina, and it will be a throw to Panama. Miguel Murillo the right back, sent back a couple of yards by the referee. Cecilia Waterman, another of the overage players, not by much, he's 24 years of age. The old man at the party, I guess we could say, is uh, Richard Dixon, one of the defenders for Panama, who is 33 years of age. But fresh legs, I'm sure, and looking forward to the tournament. Like all his teammates, Edgar Barsenias. Oh, nice back heel by Barsenias. But the referee stopped it for a free kick. So an early chance for the Panamanians to put some pressure and test out Medina and his defenders. Left-footed delivery, it's pretty good. Medina comes and crabs before Waterman can get his head on it. But certainly an early moment of danger for the Peruvians. Turn to the ground goes Alexis Arias. Takes it. Victor Cedron playing forward, but cut out on this occasion. Played forward for Jamal Rodriguez, another of the Panamanians who was involved in the U20 World Cup. Scored a very good goal down in New Zealand. Bundled over there for a free kick to Panama. Unceremoniously dumped by Maldonado of Peru. Jimenez into touch. Jairo Jimenez. Where's number seven for Panama? Waterman looking to turn. Goes to ground. No foul this time. Chance for Morales to switch the play to that left hand side. Quickly across was Fidel Escobar. 
who is playing alongside Dixon, the veteran in central defence for Panama. Cedron, one of the playmakers for Peru. Sandoval, hugging this near touchline. Sandoval can make some headway here. Sandoval into the penalty area, thinks about the shot. It took a deflection, will be kept in. And it'll be a throw to Panama. But some early good work from Ray Sandoval. Forward looking for Arias. Bundled over by Giannini. Then it's Jimenez. Trying to trip it forward. Picked off by Giannin. For Panama. And now Murillo. Has Barenas ahead of him. But given away. Cedron. Good close control by both teams. It's the way they like to play their soccer. Patient build up from Peru, who didn't have the most convincing qualifying campaign. Won only three of their nine games on their way to finishing fifth in South American qualifying. It's going to be a Panama ball. And Rodriguez waits for it to be retrieved. In to touch off Jimenez and another throw. A trot up the line for Carlos Rodriguez. This time looking for Waterman. Well, they're making progress slowly up the left-hand touchline. This time Waterman makes his way into the penalty area. He is the target, back to goal. Over by Jimenez. Second phase ball, can the red shirts of Panama keep it going? All the way back to Escobar. Looks out to that right hand side, it'll be collected by Murillo. And then Rafael Guarderas for Peru. Once again for Jimenez, number seven on this left hand flank for Panama picked up by Juan Morales one of the overage players for Peru where's 17 he's 26 the captain of the team Jimenez again involved looking for Waterman and now forward will come Maldonado with Cedron in close attendance That's good work. Just overran it. Enough for Rodriguez to get his tackle in. Peruvians regain the ball with Maldonado. Now room on that left-hand side. Not too many attacking players in and around the penalty area. The header from Giannin. And down to the ground goes Jamal Rodriguez for the second time in the first ten minutes. And it will be a free kick to Panama. Just trying to squeeze one around the corner, Rodriguez. Just got his ankles clipped. But he's up and just trots away. So Escobar will take the free kick. And uh, finds his central defensive partner, Richard Dixon. Escobar again. Murillo and that right back goes centrally. Murillo will make his way forward now. Kept in play. In fact, it did just cross the whitewash on the far side. And a throw to Peru. Taken by Joaquin Aguirre. That's a decent ball. Thinking about the shot. 
Well, Ray Sandoval with the shot for Peru. Never really tested Jaime de Gracia. Yeah, he did just a stretch for it. Jimenez on the deck. Sandoval had plenty of space. No question of offside. Brought it down off his chest. Set himself. Didn't really get the power in the shot to trouble de Gracia. Jimenez surrounded by white shirts. And Sandoval will bring it away. Well, did he get clipped? He did. By Jenin. And a free kick for Peru. Underway again. Vilchez all the way back to Medina. It's going to go out of play. And it will be a Panamanian throw. Which Rodriguez will take. With Jimenez ahead of him and Waterman ahead of him. Chested it down but couldn't control it. And Vilchez again back to Jonathan Medina. Wasn't the greatest of clearances. And they decide to go long. Looking this time for Sandoval. Arias just got his heels clipped by Francisco Narbon. And it'll be another free kick I fancy for Peru Morales happy to go back for the Peruvians to build patiently going forward back with the captain Sandoval looking to turn but couldn't find a way around Narbon Rodriguez picks it up that's Jamal Rodriguez for Panama. Now, Barcenas. Can they engineer something on that right hand side? Aguirre. Rather well, aimlessly forward. Peruvian head on it nonetheless. A little bit of head tennis on that far side. The skirmish won by Murillo of Panama. Uh, forward again. Murillo can make some room here. Some runners inside him. He goes to ground, but no whistle from the referee. Must have just lost his footing. Now it's with Vilches. Up as far as Guaderas. And back again to Aguirre. Forward by the Peruvians. Temporarily three on two here. There's definite opportunities. It's going to come to Sandoval. Sandoval thinking about the shot. Spreads it wide. De Gracia spread himself. And it will be a goal kick and nothing more dangerous as they closed in. There was all sorts of room for the Peruvians on the right-hand side. Sandoval passed it off unselfishly in the end. And De Gracia and his defenders did just enough to snuff out the danger. And behind for a goal kick for the Panamanians. Alexis Arias had the final attempt. De Gracia was named the best goalkeeper at the CONCACAF U20 qualifying championship earlier in the year so he comes with quite a reputation Morales turns it back for Guaderas and now it's Vilches for Peru as we approach the 15 minute mark and both teams just content to feel each other out for the time being. Feel their way into the game. And get a feel for the field turf. Heat and the way the ball is bouncing. In a real match atmosphere. Trying to turn is Sol Salas. 
throw in for Panama. And Salas retreats. And his opposite number four, Carlos Rodriguez, prepares to throw the ball back in play. Cecilia Waterman onto his chest. Out of play for another throw to Panama. Well, we've got uh, one and a half balls on the field, just on the touchline, just being taken away now. Rodriguez takes the throw and all the way through from Waterman into the arms of Jonathan Medina. Underneath it is Sandoval, benched over the head of Giannin. Salas forward. Picked up though by Giannin. Looking for Waterman. And now Jimenez. Waterman again, trying the give and go. But Ben Aula was in the way for Peru. Narbonne. Well, he thought he won the ball cleanly. But Arias took a tumble. And a free kick to Peru. Peru don't waste any time with their free kicks. Keen to get on with it. Maybe in behind here. Ball across. Well, it needed Dixon. And that's a bit of a wayward header. And the final header is just wide. Well, Dixon wasn't quite sure. Ray Sandoval very nearly took advantage. Wayward header from the central defender. Sandoval got up high but couldn't quite direct it on net. That's the number seven for Peru. Ray Sandoval looking very lively in these early stages. And a couple of early scares for Panama at the back. Cedron just makes his way forward, waits for Guaderas. And again, quickly dispatched down that left-hand side. Escobar up against Aguirre, and it will be another free kick to Peru. So more defending for the Panamanians in those red shirts. Just three or four yards outside the penalty area. And this is... Rather akin to a corner plus, so the big men up from the back for Peru. And they will have to defend diligently here. If the service is decent. Little left footed whipped curler in all likelihood. Two in the wall. And in the end it's a waste. Not enough curl on it, and it sailed over the net of Jaime de Garcia. Apology from Cedron. You could see what he was trying to do, but got his angles wrong. Cedron trying to curl it in. But de Garcia, happy to see it sail over the roof of his net. That was meant for Jimenez. Dixon picks it up. Having escaped that earlier moment, but forced to do more defending now, Dixon. Trying to shield the ball with his body. Dixon up against Sandoval, and the ball's going nowhere for the time being. Dixon still battling for possession. And in the end, pushes his opponent over, Sandoval. And it'll be another free kick to Peru. Not far from the edge of the penalty area. Well, Dixon, in his haste to uh, regain possession, just gave Sandoval a shove. Referee spotted it, free kick Peru. So more organisation for De Gracia and company at the back for Panama. Will the delivery better, be better this time? Oh, it's not bad this time. It was a free header, in fact, from inside the six-yard area. And uh, Maldonado just got underneath it a little. Nothing wrong with that delivery. 
Maldonado, free head up, looking away from goal, but he'll be disappointed he didn't manage to test the goalkeeper from that range. Just couldn't quite grow enough, Gonzalo Maldonado, but no question in the first 20 minutes that Peru, the South American qualifiers, are beginning to get a foothold in this game and looking the more likely to score. Narbonne. Now it's Jimenez. Jimenez touches inside, taken down by his opposite number seven, Sandoval. And this time it will be a free kick to Panama. The two sevens coming together. Sandoval with a shove in the back on Jimenez. And this is, what, 15 yards outside the penalty area. So a chance for the Panamanians to exert some pressure. Barcenas standing over the ball. As Medina tries to organize his defenders. Barcenas has a whole host of red shirts to aim for. He missed them all and behind for a goal kick. Peru looking for the quick break. Escobar put a stop to that. Looking for Waterman. It nearly found him on that far side. Murillo. Waterman. Waterman goes for goal. Takes a ricochet behind and it will be a corner to Panama. Waterman playing his club football in Uruguay with Fenix. More of a seasoned campaigner. One of the overage players. But called into the Pan Am game squad to add some potency up front. Escobar right up top, making a nuisance of himself close to the defenders and the goalkeeper. As Rodriguez, Carlos Rodriguez that is, prepares to take this corner after the referees had a word with a couple of players who are getting just a little too friendly for his liking. So Rodriguez, left-footed, curling. Waterman couldn't quite get there. Not in an effective capacity. And over the top of the crossbar. And it will be a goal kick for Peru. Decent delivery. Waterman, well, he got there. But no chance of controlling the header as the white shirts closed in on either side. Medina goes long this time with the goal kick. Murillo forward for Panama. Uh, referee is going to stop play and immediately looks to the bench. And one of the Peruvian players is going to need some attention here to see what happened. Well, a clash of heads and down goes Rafael Guaderas. And whenever there is a suggestion of, there you see the clash of heads between Guaderas and Barcenas. And whenever there is a suggestion of a head injury, referee is obliged to stop play and beckon the medical staff on the field. So Guaderas, regarded as one of the main Peruvian playmakers. Accidental Collision, by the way, with Barcenas, number 18 there. It does happen. It's a contact sport. And when there's a 50-50 ball in the air, they're there to be contested. They're there to be won. Look of concern on the face of Victor Rivera to see whether his number six, 21-year-old Guaderas, can continue. And in the meantime... Few of the players taking an impromptu water break. Warming up, by the way, is Pedro Aquino. Just in case they need to make a substitution. As we wait, well, as you can see, Guaderas is up. Trots to the far touchline. May need a little more medical attention. 
There we go. Some running repairs for the Peruvian midfielder. And we start again with the drop ball. Sportingly handed back to the Peruvians. And Guaderas is weighed back on. So back to 11 aside. Bernayola knocks it long over halfway. Nice touch there. As the Panamanians, in the form of Jamal Rodriguez, try and come forward a little over vigorous by Waterman. And we have another stoppage for another Peruvian on the deck. Well, Bernaola just got. I don't think, again, I don't think there was any intention. Uh, from Waterman there, he wasn't even looking at the player, but Bernayola tried to play the ball while he was already on the deck and maybe felt the force of Waterman's studs. Bernayola is up and okay to continue as the Peruvians do quickly. Garcia had to come all the way to the edge of his penalty area and stop quickly as he clutched onto that ball. Uh, forward looking for the target of Waterman. Jimenez on the edge of the penalty area. Helped out by Jamal Rodriguez. Rodriguez though dispossessed by Morales who's quick to get it forward but can't keep it in play. Maldonado was hoping it would stay his side of the whitewash. But the result is a throw in to Panama to be taken by Rodriguez. Out of play again. Rodriguez is wondering where the ball is. His coach is wondering why his team hasn't scored. The Peruvian, that is. And once again, a repeat of the earlier incident where Panama gradually make progress down the left-hand touchline. So now we're at level with the edge of the penalty area and Rodriguez might try a longer throw this time. Peruvia, Peru just edging the possession. Waterman couldn't get his shot away. Thought he was fouled. Waterman stayed down. Referee was close at hand. Decided there was no infringement. And play goes on as Waterman gets to his feet. But plays at the other end. Sandoval forced wide for Peru. In the end, it comes to nothing. But momentarily, at the other end, Cecilio Waterman thought he was in on goal. But couldn't connect with a telling shot. And didn't test Jonathan Medina in the Peruvian goal. Free kick for Peru. It's a little bit of a stop-start affair. Well, here was the Panama chance, comes for Waterman, there he is, and well, it was just nicked away from him, perhaps by uh, Guaderas, as Waterman was ready to pull the trigger, and by the time he did, the ball was gone. And second look, it was excellent defending by Peru, albeit last-ditch defending. And here comes Guaderas again, increasingly influential. Touch back by Rodriguez. Jimenez went to ground under the challenge of Sal Salas, who's going to get a yellow card. Salas, the referee decided he took him from behind and made no attempt to play the ball. And so Sal Salas, number four for Peru, goes into the book. Yeah, it's, uh, well, it's an untidy challenge at best. And referee decided that the Peruvian defender needed to be a cautioned free kick of course as well for Panama as Jimenez makes his way forward Escobar for Dixon Dixon looking forward for Jimenez whenever Jimenez gets the ball there's always a couple of white shirts buzzing around can't keep it in play this time and Salas 
will take the throw for Peru. Salas again. Maldonado, ball forward by Raderas. Narbonne couldn't control it. Peru plenty forward again, including the dangerous Sandoval. Three, four, five waiting for the cross. And Sandoval, having engineered a yard of space, then slipped as he was about to put the ball across. Sandoval managed to get away, but then couldn't provide the service into the middle for the waiting white shirts. But he's certainly giving Carlos Rodriguez a run for his money at left back for Panama, is Sandoval. And here he goes again, Sandoval. Everything to his left, Sandoval. Ball across, behind, it might still come for the Peruvians. Oh, it's wide. Well, Sandoval put the ball across. And in the end it came for Victor Cedron, who had time to set himself. But Cedron, after the good work by Sandoval, Cedron, time to set himself and set his sights, beat the goalkeeper, but beat the far post as well. And another chance has gone begging for the Peruvians. And the Panamanians were slow to cover there. They really can't give Cedron and Maldonado that sort of time. They've got to close those spaces quicker or they may be in trouble. Sandoval battling again with Rodriguez. It's a battle that's going to go on all afternoon. Jamal Rodriguez. That's, uh, well, now a couple of Panamanians on the deck. One of them is... Carlos Rodriguez and Jamal Rodriguez is to his feet but referee just checking now here's what happened that's the initial challenge on Jamal Rodriguez but you can also see in the background his namesake Carlos Rodriguez who is still on the deck and now to his feet the left back for Panama no further action required by the referee. As some of the Peruvians go through their warm-up exercises. Free kick Panama. Richard Dixon, left footed, up the line. Over the head of Jimenez. Roderas brings it away. Helped on by Cedron. And then a misunderstanding. And Cecilia Waterman with a chance to take the ball in the other direction with help from Barcenas. Uh, Senas wins the free kick. Another chance for Panama to mount an attack of some substance. Organization for Medina and Co. as Carlos Rodriguez prepares to deliver. Left footed, he saw what he could do from a corner a few moments ago. Six red shirts to aim for. Rodriguez, the delivery. Uh, did Medina get a touch? He did. It was going wide, but Medina was taking no chances. And it's a corner for Panama. A chance to sustain the pressure. A little too deep this time. In all truth from Rodriguez, but Medina wasn't going to take any chances. Safety first. As Escobar closed in. So, corner on this near side. It's a short one this time from the Panamanians. All the way across goal. But harmlessly behind from Jamal Rodriguez. approaching the 35 minute mark 10 to half time no question that Peru have had the better of the opportunities Sandoval and Cedron have certainly seen the white of the goalposts but neither have been able to give Peru that 
precious lead they're looking for. Murillo up the line, looking for the available Waterman. There he is, Cecilio Waterman. Out of play again, and another Peru throw on that far side, just short of halfway. Cedron tried to flick it over his head, but handed it back to the opposition. And Dixon, the Panamanian captain for Narbon. Dixon again for Escobar, who we have yet to see in an attacking sense. But believe me, he's on the ball again now, Escobar. If he gets the opportunity going forward, he will test opposition goalkeepers. That's a terrific ball in the direction of Jairo Jimenez. Waterman making his run now. It was cut out by Peru. Narbon will rescue it and all the way back to Escobar. Now Francisco Narbon. That might be too far ahead of Jimenez. And behind for a goal kick. Well, he's been fully involved, the Panamanian number seven, Jairo Jimenez. Hasn't been given much room in which to work. Clearly spotted as a dangerous customer by the Peruvian defenders. Medina with the goal kick. Up again is Jimenez. Put out of play. Shepherded out by his opposite number seven, Sandoval. And Sandoval is being brought towards the referee. And Mr. Solis is having a word with the Peruvian attacker. Quite a lecture, in fact, from the Costa Rican official. Guadero Estera's sort of peacemaker. Salas rides one challenge, runs into another, almost inevitably. Maldonado trying to make waves for Peru. But quickly across to cover was Juan Morales. Jordi Vilches will pick it up for Peru. Finds Morales again, who returns the favour. And all the way back to Medina. Bernayola, touch inside Jimenez for Salas. Salas and Rodriguez tussling. Jimenez, ball was meant for Waterman. And it was very nearly a very effectual flowing movement from Panama. Until, well, that... Vilches, who realised the danger and just volleyed it away from trouble. Narbon. Little tight angles, short passes. But as you might expect, every ball being keenly contested. Aguirre on that left-hand side. Looking for Cedron. Header forward by Narbon for Panama. And then volleyed forward only as far as Escobar of Panama. Nice touch from Jenin. And here they come again. The Panamanians, Barcenas, kept it in. Three waiting for the service in the penalty area. One of them was Jamal Rodriguez. Good flowing attacking move. Rodriguez got there first, but had a Peruvian defender all over him. Got a good connection on the header, but not to trouble Medina. Opening game in Group A in the men's tournament of the Pan Am Games football competition at the CIBC Pan Am Stadium in Hamilton, Ontario. No score with five minutes to go until half-time. Sandoval across to cover was Dixon. 
belying those 33 years there. Salas with the throw. Dixon all over the opponent who went down theatrically and garnered absolutely no response from the referee. That'll spin through to Medina. Who finds Bernaola and Guaderas and in turn to the captain Morales. Well, you'd think that Victor Rivera, the Peruvian coach, would be the happier of the two as we approach the interval. This team have looked crisper, looked more composed, hungrier. But they are still missing that elusive goal. Cedron making good yards. Cedron doing well. That's an excellent ball. This could be the opener. And in the end, it's behind for a corner. Arias looking to take it quickly. And right across towards the back stick. It evades all the white shirts this time. And Aguirre is there to pick it up. Battling with Murillo, who wins the throw. Right back for Panama. But just every now and then, the Peruvians have threatened to carve the Panamanian defence open. Once again there, the Panamanians surviving another dangerous moment. That's not the best of balls. A present for Giannin. Forward for Waterman. Giannin, it was a little short for him. Arias. Waiting for the overlap from Sol. It's there now. And this is Sol Salas. First time ball into the area. Oh, it's wide again. And Sandoval, well, a free header once more. And Ray Sandoval knows he should have scored. Delicious ball from Salas. And look at that absolutely unchallenged header for Sandoval. But a foot wide of the post. And De Gracia, again, not tested. He knows how close it was, but he'll know in his heart of hearts. Ray Sandoval that he should have scored just a couple of minutes before half time. Another vivid illustration of Peru's coordination, quickness of thought going forward. All that is missing is that finishing touch. Underneath it was Narbonne for Panama. But they've had plenty of chances, Peru, in this first half. And really only themselves to blame that they haven't converted one of them. But certainly they will go in encouraged by what they have managed to create in this first half. They've created plenty. They just haven't finished any of them. So Rodriguez on halfway with the throw for Panama. Arderas for Medina. Who looks long, looking for the run of Cedron. Clumsy challenge from Murillo. And another free kick for Peru. And is there time for one more meaningful attack before half time? There have been a couple of stoppages, so I guess we should expect a couple of minutes of stoppage time. Sandoval got his wires crossed there and it rolls into touch for a Panamanian throw. Who was that uh, stoppage when Rafael Guaderas needed some attention on the field for following that clash of heads? So it's just a matter of how much extra time the fourth official will show us in just a moment or two. Well, surprisingly, just the one minute. I thought there might be a couple. 
And we are already in that sole minute of stoppage time at the end of the first half. And a goal kick for Jonathan Medina, who's in absolutely no hurry to take it. And the Peruvian players know that they can more or less run down the clock to half time, get into the locker room, get some refreshment and some perhaps new instructions. That's not the best goal kick from Medina. And Waterman has pounced on it, ran one challenge. He's got two to aim for on the left hand side if he can. Initial cross is blocked as the clock runs down and Peru can now play their way out of trouble. Ball actually did go into touch on that far side, but we've only got a matter of seconds left in this first half. Mr. Solis beckoning the Panamanians to get on with it because he's going to blow for half time any second. Into the heart of the penalty area, Jamal Rodriguez trying to get there. And Peru will clear. And Mr. Solis blows his whistle for half time. The half time in large parts dominated by Peru. And that man, Ray Sandoval, who had a couple of very good looks at goal, including a free header just minutes before the break. At the other end, Cecilio Waterman has been the main danger man for Panama. And a warm welcome back to the CIBC Pan Am Stadium in Hamilton, Ontario for the start of the second half of this Group A game between Panama in red and Peru in white with that famous red slash across their chest. A couple of half-time substitutions for Panama, Aguilar and Nunez coming on at the start of this second half and Juan Diego Liu I believe is also on for Peru so Panama kicking from left to right in this second half and will be aware as the captain Richard Dixon picks up the ball but they need to produce more offensively and be a little bit more rock steady at the back against Peru in this second 45 minutes if they were to emerge from this game with a point or better. Because there's no question that Peru had the better of the chances in that first 45 minutes. Confirmation of the arrival of Juan Diego Lee on the right-hand side of defence in place of Sol Salas at the start of the second half for the Peruvians uh, in quickly is Jimenez all the way across goal and hurried behind for the first corner of the second half well the Panamanian number seven was much in evidence in the first 45 minutes and has clearly started the second half in a similar vein. So an early chance for Panama to stamp their authority against Peru. Taken by Rodriguez. Flick on. And the goal. Within seconds of the restart. The opening goal has gone to Panama. And the substitute has got it, I believe. Forman Aguilar appears to have got the final touch. Flick at the near post, then the second head up. And there was absolutely nothing Jonathan Medina could do about it. Just got fingertips on it. Delivery from Rodriguez, the flick on. And then the second head up was good enough. Osiel Nunez. Well, it was Aguilar credited with the goal. So what a terrific start to the second half for Panama. And that's not what Peru were expecting, having had so many 
clear-cut chances in the first 45 minutes. They fall behind within two minutes of the restart. And Jorman Aguilar has been on the field, well, just for those couple of minutes, came on as a half-time substitute and an immediate impact from the Panamanian to give his team the lead against Peru. Jamal Rodriguez beaten to it by Morales. Here comes the Peruvian captain and they will want to get back on level terms as soon as they possibly can. Panama, of course, have other ideas. Here comes Aguilar again. But the player has been stopped behind him for an infringement and a foul on Jimenez. Which is going to mean a free kick to Panama. There was the uh, challenge on Jimenez. Well, he just ran into an opponent, bounced off him. Well, he's had a as you can see, quite a physical night in terms of fouls. Ran straight into Bernaola. He's still down on the field and the medical staff are being summoned now. Might have just taken the wind out of him. As he ran into the Peruvian defender Bernaola. And went down in a heap. And hasn't moved much since. Well, what a dramatic start to this second half. A goal from a corner, Jamal Rodriguez will get the assist for the corner. But the uh, final touch from Horoman Aguilar, the substitute. Have another look. Just ran straight in to Berneola. And referee spotted it, and as you can see, Clearly in some pain, Jimenez is being escorted with some aid to that far side. Maybe thoughts of another substitution. I'm sure he will carry on if he can. Menola, well, no punishment, no yellow card that I saw, but it will most definitely be a free kick for Panama. who will lead by that goal to nil. But here comes Peru, looking to make amends, Cedron. And Cedron goes down under the challenge of Murillo. And the Panamanian fullback is shown a yellow card. Well, it was an untidy challenge. It was kind of a swing and a miss, really, uh, from Murillo. Ball had gone by the time... He swung his left boot at it, and he did catch Cedron. Dangerous play in the opinion of the referee, which resulted in the caution. And there is confirmation of the yellow card for the Panama fullback. So maybe now an opportunity as De Gracia organizes his defenders. And a four-man wall. Referee ready, little chip over the top. Out of play on that far side, and it will be a corner to Peru. Meanwhile, Jimenez has been waved back on by the referee after a couple of minutes of treatment. Out of your shot at the moment, but we are back to 11 aside, I can assure you. Peru corner on that far side, left footed, in swing up. It's going to fly over the net, but the last touch came off a Panamanian defender and so another opportunity for a corner for Peru Arias hurries over to take it as the tall defenders stay forward looking for that opportunity maybe it's a set piece that will get Peru back into this game Escobar with the initial header not convincingly cleared and on that far side in the end behind, and the chance goes to begging for Sandoval, who had a terrific influence in the first half. He's hardly had a kick of the ball since the restart. 
I'm sure that will change. Corner again. Punch this time from De Gracia. They try and get it away. Pascuaderas looking for the quick counter. White shirt still well forward. Maldonado looking to turn for Peru. Finds Sandoval. Touch inside for Guaderas. Aguirre the ball across. Still in the danger area. Trying to clear it was Murillo. Not effectively. Back in by Aguirre. And there is the equaliser. It's come for Peru and it's Gonzalo Maldonado who's tied it up. Within five minutes of falling behind, nothing that De Garcia could do about it. It's Maldonado. It's 1-1 in Hamilton. Well, Aguirre got a second chance. Maldonado, another free header. Not the first time we've seen free headers between the two centre-backs. Off the post from Gonzalo Maldonado. Just a little flick. Took it beyond De Garcia. And two goals in the space of eight minutes at the start of the second half. And we're all tied up between Panama and Peru at one apiece. Here's the goal scorer from the Panamanians in the meantime. Aguilar trying to make a nuisance of himself at the other end. Well, on the balance of play over the first 54 minutes... There's no question that Peru deserved a goal. They had so many opportunities in the first half that they didn't take. But finally, a precise header from Gonzalo Maldonado has tied up this Group A game at one apiece. Two goals in the space of around eight minutes. And Maldonado doing what good number nines always do, using his head to great effect. And placing the ball in the corner, giving the Panamanian goalkeeper absolutely no chance of saving it. Bit of a miscue there from Baneola. That drops uh, kindly for Medina. Not seen as a back pass. So Medina could catch it legally. Over the head of Pedro Giannini. Luciel Nunez, one of those two half-time substitutions for Panama. Rodriguez back for his goalkeeper, who was forced to deal with it in a hurry and smashes it out of play. When in doubt, kick it out, as they say. De Gracia did just that. Now, can Panama calm themselves down after the disappointment of conceding that goal chest from Waterman was meant for Jamal Rodriguez but quickly in with the white shirts of Peru nice touch again from Rodriguez looking over the top for Jimenez who will get there tracked by the Peruvian right back substitute Jamal Rodriguez has done well It'll come out to Giannin. Spreads the play for Murillo on this near side. Further right to Waterman. And all the way across. Well, Murillo trying to square it across for Jamal Rodriguez. And Manita did enough and grabbed it at the second attempt. Jamal Rodriguez again to Nunez, operating in a central midfield role since coming on at half-time. The other Rodriguez, Carlos Rodriguez with the throw for Panama.
Chance to reset for Panama. Chance to face up. But not before there will be another substitution for Peru. And the introduction of Elsa Rodas, who is going to come on in place of Alexis Arias. So the substitutions complete, two for both sides now. Escobar, no nonsense defending from the big Panamanian at the back. Controlled with Pierre Giannini. But Peru spread the play to this near side. First touch almost for Rodas, who's come over to play on this left-hand side. Now, here comes Jamal Rodriguez. The ball was meant for Aguilar. But it was too close to Medina. Aguilar again. Rodriguez, little chip forward. Oh, it was a golden opportunity, wasn't it? Just over the top of the central defender. But Cecilio Waterman got his angles wrong and ballooned the ball over the top. Managed to stay on side, but couldn't control the header. And he knows he should have done better from that position. Unchallenged header. He was just stretching for it a little. But he's always there or thereabouts, Cecilio Waterman. And Peru will know they can't afford to take their eyes off him, particularly in those central areas. This time Waterman goes to ground under the challenge of Rodas. And a free kick to Panama, which nobody particularly wants to take. In fact, coming over from that left-back spot is Carlo Rodriguez. We've seen that cultured left foot before in this game. Spent something curling towards the goalkeeper. Perhaps into that no man's land. Not so much curl this time. Header from the uh, skipper, Richard Dixon. Easy enough for Medina. Header forward this time from Rodriguez. Who then takes a tumble. And a free kick under the challenge of Vilches. As Aguilar gets to his feet. Central free kick this time. Uh, Vilches into the back of Aguilar. And more decision making for the Panamanians. Having gotten themselves in front. Then allowed the equaliser. Well, Escobar is there, as is Jairo Jimenez. And it's just possible that Escobar might just blast this. It's all of 35 yards out. Escobar is going to hit one. Escobar! Well, that's what he can do. I watched him do it at the U20 World Cup in New Zealand some weeks ago. Not so far away. And he will worry defenders and goalkeepers as long as Panama are part of these Pan Am games. Got the full meat of the ball, a couple of feet wide in the end of Medina's upright. But Escobar, from time to time, shows you that he's a lot more than just a central defender. Escobar again, this time the high route, looking for Aguilar. Aguilar's done well. Needs some support. We'll find it from Jimenez. Can't keep it in, though. It's gone behind for a goal kick. Well, I think those free kicks and those forays forward from Fidel Escobar are going to become a familiar sight here in Hamilton over the next couple of weeks. And goalkeepers like Medina need to be very vigilant he hit that from all of 35 yards, and it was still gathering pace, I think, 
as it whistled by his post. Waterman battling with his opponent for possession. It'll fall for Murillo. Touch inside for Nunez. Now Giannini, but can't control it. Maybe the break's on here. Now Escobar's got to do some defending and does it very well. Forward comes Rodriguez, but dispossessed as the white shirts of Peru look to put the pressure on. Maybe they will here. Touch inside, can't foul him now. Sandoval thought about shooting himself. It's just wide. Just wide. I think it's Guaderas with the final shot. Rafael Guaderas, left footed, took it first time. Sandoval thought about it, unselfishly laid it off to Guaderas. First time, plenty of pace, but just uh, a couple of feet wide of the post of De Gracia. Maybe not even a couple of feet. Maybe it was more like inches. Forward again, that'll be easy enough for Medina. Well, the game beginning to get a little stretched. We're beginning to see real chances at both ends. Be a free kick for Peru. As Rodriguez wisely backs away. But it's becoming a very entertaining game. Here come the Peruvians again. This time it's Giannina in the way. Jamal Rodriguez. And now Dixon back for De Gracia. Just enough pace on it to get to Murillo, but he's been dispossessed. Plenty of white shirts still forward. Maldonado, one of them, the goal scorer for Peru. Guaderas. That's going to go out of play. Murillo with the throw for Panama. Trying the overhead was Rodas. Forward in the general direction of Aguilar. Little ball for Jimenez. Good skills by Jimenez. But in the end, dispossessed. And Peru with a chance to reset with Bernayola. And here they come again with Juan Diego Lee up that far side. Jamal Rodriguez has got some room in front of him now. Waterman hugging this near touchline. He has some support with Murillo. Back for Rodriguez. And finally for Bess Escobar. Panama now shading possession, as you can see. It was even Stevens at half time. But Panama have clearly shown more intent in this second half. That's not, I think, going to get all the way through to Waterman. And it is El Cerrodas who shepherds it behind for a goal kick to Peru. Approaching the three-quarter mark at the CIBC Pan Am Stadium in Hamilton. As the crowd continues to grow. And the sun continues to set. Aguirre. Morales was about to make his presence felt, but the referee brought that all to a halt and uh, asks for the ball as well. Will be a Panama free kick, which Escobar will take. Well, he's in his own half of the field, so he's certainly not going to shoot from there. Of that I am certain. But does knock it forward towards Waterman, who gets the flick on. He was looking once again for Jorman Aguilar. Turning this time is Nunez. Trying to find a way through to Aguilar. That's neat and tidy from Peru. Red shirts funneling back. And Giannin, the tackle from behind. Referee was right up with play. Didn't like the challenge. And 
shows the Panamanian midfielder a yellow card for the challenge on Cedron. Joins his teammate Murillo in the referee's notebook. So a warning shot for a couple of the Panamanians. Another yellow card in the same game. Would mean a red and a suspension for the next group game. De Gracia focused with this free kick. 15 yards inside the Panamanian half of the field. Rodriguez left footed takes it. Great delivery and a goal. Well, it's not going to count. It's offside. It's not going to count. The Peruvians think they're scored. But a vigilant assistant on that far side had his flag up. And the ball that ended up in the back of the net. Have another look. Well, very sharp eyed. The last man on the left hand side, the one who put it in the net. And just. A little beyond that last defender, which meant that Negracia didn't have to make a save. And so we stay deadlocked at 1-1 in Hamilton. Up goes Aguilar. High ball forward, dealt with by Escobar. Jamal Rodriguez. Last touch was off Guaderas and a throw to Panama final substitution for Peru is going to be the introduction of Kevin Ruiz number 11 and off goes Joaquin Aguirre so Ruiz Attacking midfielder, a forward. Clearly fresh ideas, fresh legs needed up front, in the opinion of the Peruvian coach, Victor Rivera. So Ruiz wears 11. He's on and looking to make an impression and perhaps prove to the coach that he should have been on the field from the start of play. Here's another of the substitutes, Rodas. Cedron. Back for Guarderos. Guarderos. It's a good run. And it's going to run for the last half tackle. Terrific tackle by Rodriguez as Morales was about to pull the trigger. Meanwhile, at the other end, it's end to end stuff at the moment. Aguilar goes down in a heap. Dance towards the referee. No, saw nothing wrong with the challenge. And there's no question that both teams think they can win it. 20 minutes to go, plenty of time for both. The game poised on a knife edge at the moment. Guarderas again, his work has been very neat and tidy. Rodas in effectively. Sandoval faded a little in the second half, Ray Sandoval. After all those forays forward he made before half time. A final substitution for the Panamanians. End of Jairo Jimenez. Also had a very good first half, not so much in the second. And Jose Munoz. Where's 15 Munoz? So both coaches have used all three subs with a good 20 minutes to play once you factor in the stoppage time. Aguirre with the clearing header. Jamal Rodriguez helps it on. Bernayola all the way back to Medina in the Peruvian goal. That'll be Rodas' ball. Trying to say, send Sandoval away was 
Maldonado. There is Sandoval. And the impressive Guarderas. No hurry for the Peruvians. More important for them to keep possession of the ball, use it wisely. Rodas and Guarderas. This time forward over the head of Sandoval. Turning was Giannin. Nunez is looking to connect with Aguilar. But the door slammed in their face. Richard Dixon back to his goalkeeper. De Garcia rolls it for Escobar. Escobar up towards halfway. Chip over the top looking for the run of Murillo. Murillo got the last touch. It will be a throw. Which Rodas will take for Peru. Sandoval ahead of him. And Maldonado ahead of him. But neither of them get there. It's Cecilia Waterman. The number nine. And they're appealing for a handball on the edge of the area. Half-hearted appeal somewhat. Nothing given by the referee. Not too many forward at the moment for Peru. And it's good uh, covering work by Rodriguez. The left back. Rodriguez will just shepherd it behind. Sensible work by the Panamanian fullback. Well, he's been busy, particularly in the first half, when he was having that non-stop battle with... Sandoval, Rodriguez, Sandoval has since switched to the opposite flank. De Garcia, De Garcia screaming at his players ahead of him. Delivers the goal kick up to halfway. Ruiz, touch inside. Maldonado, Waterman back to help out, forward they come again, chance on that far side now for Munoz, the substitute for Panama, two to his left, if they can be found Munoz again, stayed on side, Waterman is in the penalty area, over the head of Jamal Rodriguez and Peru can clear. And perhaps a mad attack of their own. This is Cedron. Cedron for Guaderas. Away by Dixon. And that's uh, fallen very nicely for Aguilar. They need some help. It'll come from Waterman. Further right. As the red shirts funnel forward, Munoz. But it all peters out. Five Panamanians got forward quickly. And now they're going to have to be careful at the other end of the field. As Dixon is across to clear for Panama. And uses his experience to mop up very nicely. Pedro Giannin for Carlos Rodriguez. Forward looking for Waterman again, one-on-one. -on -one. Can Waterman find a way through? Waterman right here. Waterman! Oh, he's missed it. Cecilio Waterman did the hard part. Got a step ahead of Rodas. But couldn't find the back of the net. Sheer persistence from Cecilio Waterman. And here's what the goalkeeper saw. Must have feared the worst. But Waterman couldn't find the target. How costly a miss might that be for Panama? Well, he's had his opportunities, the big number nine for Panama. But he hasn't managed to convert the way he would like. 
Sandoval. Guaderas forward over the top of Maldonado. All square on shots on goal and attempts on target. It's been a very even contest. It's offside. Peruvians have got the ball in the back of the net again. Sandoval with the header, but once again, it will not count. Another offside. Chalks it off. Uh, at the moment of intact, another good spot by the assistant. Sandoval is just by six inches or so. The wrong side of the last defender. Shakes his head, but the call was absolutely right by the assistant on that far side of the field. A couple of goals now have been wiped out due to offside for Peru. Now it's back for Nunez. Plenty of Panamanians forward again. A shot this time from Giannin. Did not trouble Medina. A little over 10 minutes to play. Still deadlocked at one apiece. Those two goals shortly after half time from Aguilar on 47. And Maldonado, the number nine for Peru, after 54 minutes. There have since been chances at both ends. And both teams will still feel that they have the measure of their opponent. And they can go on and win this game and claim three points in this opening Group A game. Sandoval has got some room. No flag this time. Not too many to aim for at the moment. And away... Temporarily by Rodriguez, whistles referee, and a free kick. Cedron walks away. He may have said something to the referee because he's being called back for a chat. Calm down, says the referee. So 10 minutes to play in Hamilton in the opening Group A game in round-robin play. If the scores are level at the end of 90 minutes, both teams take a point each and move on. Obviously that is not the case when we get to the medal rounds, when there has to be a winner. Not so in the group stages, when all's fair in love and war and a 1-1 tie, if that's how it ends, will be a point apiece to both teams but we're a long way from done yet Maldonado Cedron four forward in white shirts waiting for the service still waiting bit of a pull of the shirt there from Rodriguez Refer assistant saw it well is it going to be a throw or is it going to be a free kick I think it's going to be a free kick. I saw the shirt pull from over here from the Panamanian fullback. Referee spotted it as well, as did his assistant. And so Victor Cedron. No, referee's not ready. Decided to go short with that one and perhaps surprise the Panamanians. Well, he certainly surprised the referee as well. And the assistant referee is now on the field, and he's going to usher the two-man wall back a couple more yards to the satisfaction of Mr. Solis, the Costa Rican referee. So Cedron will whip it in, left-footed. Corner is the outcome. Effective defending by the Panamanians, and Rodriguez has had a very effective game at left-back. There to clear away the danger again. But at the expense of a Peruvian corner. More defending for De Gracia and his teammates. De Gracia started to come. It was headed away from him by one of his own players. And out for a Panamanian throw. But Murillo is being ushered back a couple of yards. Back you go, says the referee. Okay, now the official is happy. Murillo 
throwing on the run, looking for Waterman. How must he rue that missed chance from five minutes ago? Cecilia Waterman in one on one with the goalkeeper, but pulled the shot wide of Medina's far post. He may well not get a better opportunity in the remaining seven or eight minutes. Another throw for Panama. Aurelio was a little short, in all honesty, for Dixon, but he did well. The Panamanian captain finds Aguilar, goal scorer, out for that far side. As they look to build again, Panama, shot is well wide. And behind for a goal kick, Nunez with the effort, but it was never going to trouble Medina. Six minutes plus stoppage time remaining at the CIBC Pan Am Stadium in Hamilton. Deadlocked at one apiece between the South Americans of Peru and the Central Americans of Panama. And you get the impression that neither will really be satisfied with a tie and a point. Both will feel they've done enough, created enough over the course of the 90 minutes to claim all three points, but that may not be the case. Juan Diego Lee with the throw for Peru. Forward by Vilches. Maybe some room here. Easy enough for De Gracia. Spotted the danger, made his mind up early, and has dispatched it very early over the top, looking for Aguilar. And it was well dealt with by the Peruvian defence. Nunez Morales, I beg your pardon, trying to come forward for Peru. Now, it's just out of play, despite the despairing run of Jamal Rodriguez. Inside the last five minutes. Neither coach wants to risk too much at this stage. But I sense there is still an appetite out there for both these teams to go and try and find a winner. But obviously you don't want to lose it late at this stage. Aguilar around the back. Chipped the ball across. It's just too far ahead, but it's going to come back for Rodriguez. And behind for a corner. Jamal Rodriguez... Just thought for a moment that he was going to get a shot a shooting opportunity. But by the time the ball came to him, it had disappeared behind for another corner for Panama. Who don't seem to be in a desperate hurry to take it. Maybe they've had their instructions from the bench to just wind down the clock and play for the point. But it is going to be Carlos Rodriguez to whip another ball in left-footed. There's plenty of Panamanian teammates to aim for. Five I can count in the penalty area at the moment. Doesn't clear the first defender. Second phase ball will come back for Munoz. Jamal Rodriguez. And all the way back for Murillo. De Gracia is well outside his area, but under no great pressure. Plays it forward again over the head of Waterman. Rodriguez. Looking for Jamal Rodriguez. Forward they come again. Maybe this is the opportunity they've been looking for. Too many white shirts. Half-hearted appeals for handball from Munoz. Referee not interested in the slightest. Dixon will let that run back to his goalkeeper, De Gracia. Two and a half minutes remaining, plus stoppage time. Rodriguez inside for Giannin. Jamal Rodriguez has either team got the appetite or the bravery 
to take a risk and try and find a winner. Rodriguez chip forward looking for Waterman. Waterman using his strength. Waterman's gone down and the referee's pointed to the penalty spot. Rodas and Waterman were battling for the ball. And it is a penalty kick to Panama in the 89th minute. Well, here's what happened. Down goes Waterman under the challenge of Rodas. And Waterman, for all his endeavours, strong man. The protests will continue a while from the Peruvians. They felt it was a fair shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder challenge. Referee didn't see it that way. And it's the referee's opinion that counts. Eventually the Peruvians being ushered away sensibly by Guadiaras. But it will be a penalty kick to Panama. And I believe Fidel Escobar is primed to take it. The central defender... Can Medina keep them out? Or can Panama such a dramatic late winner in the last minute of normal time? Fidel Escobar for Panama scores. 2-1 Panama. Excellent penalty. Now he can celebrate. And Panama might have their winner from a controversial penalty. But no mistake from Fidel Escobar. No chance for Medina. Panama leads Peru by two goals to one. Excellent penalty. Escobar never looked like he was going to miss that. Just stroked it in. Sent Medina the wrong way. And whatever the merits were of the award of the penalty kick. There are few... That can deny Escobar his grandstand finish. Well, we spoke about him throughout the game. That he might well make his presence felt in this tournament. Instead of 35 yards, he's done it from 12. But it was enough to beat Medina from the penalty spot in the 90th minute. Three minutes of stoppage time. Is there time for Peru to come from behind a second time? A free kick deep in Panamanian territory. And they'll take as long as they can. Forward with relish. Adaro up to meet it is Murillo. Now, whatever the Peruvians are going to do, they need to do it in a hurry. We're midway through that period of extra time, those extra three minutes added on by the fourth official. Maybe a chink of light here into the danger area. Trying to keep that ball bobbling around in and around the Panamanian penalty area. But in the end... A push from Rodas, penalised by the referee, and all the pressure evaporates. Rodas, the guilty party in the award of the penalty after tussling with Waterman. Escobar thumps it downfield, out of play. Wouldn't look out of field, out of place on a rugby field, but as long as it's as far away from his goal as it can possibly be. That is all that Fidel Escobar cares about right now. 2-1, Panama leads. Perhaps 30 seconds remaining. Down goes Nunez. Another free kick for Panama. And another yellow card coming. Nothing wrong with Nunez. Here is the challenge, though. Cynical one, in all truth, from 
Guadieras, just frustration getting the better of the Peruvian midfielder who's been one of their better performance but there was nothing classy about that tackle well we played the three minutes anymore now it's just a matter of how long the referee wants to add and as long as Panama can hold on to the ball for the next couple of minutes or not even that much maybe the next 20 seconds or so next couple of seconds is all it takes celebrations for Pepino and Panama as the inquisitions begin and the accusations start to fly at the